Look, if you like this podcast and you want to support this podcast, check out jointhespit.com because you are going to get this show. You can get ad-free episodes. You get early access to episodes before anybody else because you are so exclusive oh and goodness. awesome and good-looking and attractive and smarter than everybody else, and you get to support this show. Check it out, jointhespit.com. What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. All I want to do is a zoom, zoom, man, a boom, boom. <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome now in. Now I need a saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I mean, it's, it's good. It's Felt a, like it was missing a zoom, but it was good. It's true. You're oh shoot. It you're was right. Missing yeah, a zoom. yeah. I missed. It's a. It's not just a zoom. It's no. a zoom a zoom zoom. Yeah, zoom a zoom zoom. And I a boom had, boom. I had only so much time <laughs> and only was, so many like beats to yeah, fit the in. Beats my, were still a little bit. It's very restrictive. <laughs> hey, it's a tough place to be with the scat. You think you could do it better? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you only get one shot. Welcome in to the Spitballers. Al Borland is here. What's up, Spitwads? Oh. Oh, well, someone was ready for their big introduction. Yeah, they were. Figure was on the button. I'm ready. Is the judge here, too? hey All okay. right. All right. Well, now we're in good hands. Uh, would you rather situation room a fun draft on today's episode of the show? You can check out the website, spitballerspod.com. Learn how you can support the show, keep it going. Big news. Big news. Huge announcement. Jason what? is still alive. Oh, yeah. That's good. It's easy to uh, be alive. To be alive when you don't spend a lot of your weekend on the side of a highway. Um, but I did spend a lot of my weekend. You did. On, I did. Um, I had not one, but two. Um, can I call them near death experiences? You can, you can definitely call them incidents for, for you, for for me, right? Because I don't usually get out of the house or do things that put any kind of danger in. But I'm driving up north, and and here's the best part. Um, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take my boys. I'm gonna take my. It's night. I'm going up north to what a, a, to a cabin. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna take my dogs. Oh, what a dog dad. Yeah. I'm gonna. I got my dogs. I got my boys. We're gonna go up. Now Stay what, the night what, at a cabin. Okay, I, let's let's set the can scene. Can I color here. in the lines a little bit? Yes. Please. Yeah, I think Mike were thinking the th same thing. Uh, people think of Arizona; it's this desertous landscape, right? You got the Valley of the Sun, mostly accurate, all factual. But if you drive northward, maybe you've heard of the uh, city Flagstaff, Arizona. Mm -hmm. There are pine trees, and there are cabins, and there's, there's cool weather. Hippies everywhere. There's a mountain. Yeah, you go up a you know a mountain. You, well, there's mountains. You go up a mountain to get there. I mean, it's it's not treacherous, but it is a you know it's an elevation. You go up to about a mile high. Yeah, take that, Denver. And so, uh, <laughs> and and Jason's like, Wait, is Look, it really that high? It, it really is. I've thought about that. Like, why don't Wait we get minute. credit for a mile high Wait, city? Wait, Den Denver's over here flexing. Yeah, like we got the mile high stadium. Meanwhile, we're over here. We have. Uh, the the Death Valley ish area, not the real Death Valley, but you know a ridiculous valley, and the, but just two hours to the north, you go up the mountain. <laughs> Flagstaff's at seven thousand feet almost. And where's Denver? Where is Denver? Oh, Denver! You better be eight. They better. You better be eight thousand. Five thousand two hundred. Oh, Denver! You lying? No, 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 no. The reason why is because it's exactly five thousand two hundred eighty. It's exactly a that mile high. It's not the fact that they're just really high. It's that they're exactly well, a they're mile both. high. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, <laughs> they were they were the first. Um, <laughs> nice, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I guess they they're they're big on being exactly but five thousand two hundred. But I do not care if you are out here saying we're the mile high city. You're we, in. We you're get in, higher in flags. Though. You're in, <laughs> You are insinuating that you are. Above, oh, you're yeah. at, like you are literally above everyone. You are literally elevated above other cities. Oh, meanwhile, you're just barely at a mile. We are unbelievable. We, you know, we've got the fancy footballers. We 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 are in the football world. 
You hear all the time. Oh, they're going to have to practice for the elevation. Oh, the elevation. <laughs> they're going to run out. Of, they can kick the ball farther. You're not even that high. <laughs> Arizona's got you beat, Denver. It's unbelievable. This is not the story you were telling. No. But this is now the but story. This is the, this is the story nobody wants to talk about, <laughs> but we'll Look, do it. The mainstream media refuses <laughs> to talk about how regularly high <laughs> Denver is. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I'm driving Jason's up. going up towards 7,000 feet. Uh, yes, I'm going up to uh, way higher than my high Which city. is clearly dangerous. And on the way, of course, we decide to leave at night. It's pitch black. And what on time did you leave? 8.30 at night. What? Problem number one. That is, a, it's, it's bad decision making 101, <laughs> but it still happened. And I'm thinking, like, what's going to happen? I'm going to go up there. I'm going to lay my boys to sleep. Like, the, you know what I mean? It just that way we get the drive out of the way. Yeah, that was the goal, is tomorrow we wake up and we get a full day. And, of course, I get a flat tire. Yeah. Oh, nightmare. Okay. This is a two-lane highway going up a mountain. There is not room for, you know, I'm not setting up a tent over here. This I am. This ain't flat tire zone. No, <laughs> you, you're not changing a tire. You're not changing a tire on the side of a mountain where no, where you have nowhere to pull over. It's pitch black. I have no cell service. I have... No, well, it's probably because you're, you're so elevated. I'm way higher than the cell phones can go. And so here I am ready to like, I'm like, what do I do? What? Like, I can't leave my boys. I didn't bring leashes for my dogs because I'm an idiot. I can't get the dogs out of the car. I I'm uh, on the side of this pitch black road. So I had to leave the car and go call. Okay. Like go find cell service. But it's Arizona. So it's outside. It's probably it's a sweltering. 90 plus degrees because even at night still it's it's still warm it was freezing so much wind and it was i think it was like 40 degrees uh because we're we're so much higher than denver and well, let me guess shorts and flippy flops shorts and flip flops yes but i knew i was going to the cold so i brought a jacket with me now that jacket was on the passenger seat mm -hmm. but if i walk back to the car i'm on hold for like 10 15 minutes trying okay. to get service so if i walk back to the car to get my jacket i lose the call so i have to be here you're, you're starting over yeah so anyways that took all night all weekend we finally got back down to safety we get back up to the cabin we're driving home at night at night you didn't learn your lesson the first time well i mean we wanted to make the most of our cabin and We've got two cars. My wife is in front of us. And it's just shaking his and, head. And He's I, so upset with Jason. <laughs> Life I'm, choices. No, I'm just so amazed. Because this doesn't feel real. The second story this is, is even... This is where it gets going. I was about to say, the first story sucks compared yeah. to the second story. So I'm driving back down, uh, which is, you know, I was very high. And um, my wife's van was right in front of me. She had my daughter, and I'm driving. And all of a sudden... I see her, her daughter as well. Right, yes. <laughs> she, she, had, she had my daughter. I had her boys. Um, and I see her jerk the car to the side of the road like 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 uh -oh. crazy. And I, I was like, whoa. So I get I pulled behind her. And then it was like there's a 10,000 10, bees inside. The, my daughter goes out the right. My wife goes out the left. And they're like patting themselves like. Oh, they, uh, they, so they pull off to the side of the road. Yes, they pull off to okay. the side of the road. And they are going. They, there is clearly some sort of is this like uh was that tommy boy tommy, or <laughs> black sheep it was black sheep whatever yes. same movie the same difference but they same they, movie but yeah. they were pulled over by an officer there's bees everywhere <laughs> and to uh, avoid getting a ticket because like, you can't blame someone for doing save that. yourself <laughs> that was great that was a great moment so anyways it turns out it was a gigantic spider I'm not talking no run of the mill. Unbelievable! It was I any other animal, anything. If there had been a thousand bees, I could have come and done something to save it. But here we are on the side of the highway. <laughs> I can't do anything. I'm look. I'm super arachnophobic. I'm looking at this monster, this this just creature from the depths of I hell. I want to know how big this thing really was. Has any of us actually seen it? Did you take pictures? Oh, why would I do that? Then I don't For believe proof? that this thing was big. My wife couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Mm. We were... I was it's so... A, it's a cricket. This whole thing's been a cricket. So uh, I didn't realize your your wife is also 
I didn't, as bad realize, as you. I didn't realize that either, that she was that bad. <laughs> but we, I was so mad at myself because here we are. Real quick, just for if you're new, I mean, there's 200 shows. Maybe not everybody knows Jason is the biggest arachnophobia victim yes. in the land. Like, he's truly, really. Yes. Watch. If, if spiders. You, oh, if you really <laughs> want proof of it, it's the fact that here we are on the side of the road with my family in a dangerous position. And I couldn't do anything. I was so embarrassed with myself. I was so disappointed that I can't step up. I was like telling myself, it's I just, can a, do, it's it's just, just a, it's a bug. I'm a 275 pound man. It's a bug. I can go get it. And I couldn't do it. We're like, what do we do? Do we call the police? Do we leave do you call roadside assistance? Do we just burn the van and say we're a one car family now? I don't know. But so what do we do? We called Al Borland. That's yeah. That's that's a solution to a lot of problems. He Which was, I don't. I don't blame you. I mean, you. he's the he's the bat phone for Jason. Yeah, really. Thank you. Um, and and man, Al came. No, but hold on, hold on. This is part of the story that I've not heard. Owl. Yeah. That, that phone call. In your words, like in your experience, ex tell yeah, take tell us that, into your mind. Tell us that part of the story because that is missing. He was in full hysterics. I, I can <laughs> confirm that, that Jason was terrified. And, and so I asked him, I said, do you, I was about 40 minutes away, though. And I said, do you want me to do you want me to come? I just dropped my family off at a restaurant. I'll, I'll leave them here and I'll, I'll get to you. But it'll take me 35 minutes if I'm flying. And he goes, I, the, I don't know what's going to happen. The spider will probably be gone by then. Don't worry about it. Click and just hangs up. He hung up on yeah. you? Yeah. Well, because if it's going to take him that long. <laughs> If the spider crawls anywhere, we're just completely out of luck. Like we're, you know, what if the spider crawls down okay. and we don't see where it goes? So, uh, with both of you being scared, who was who was the guard? Who made sure the spider did not move? My wife was the eyes on the spider. Okay, so uh, someone someone was tracking the yes. spider. Jason was rappelling down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had left my family. Uh, he hitchhiked said, to the random, I love you! the random stranger. Was looking at, at the trees. Can I build a house here? So eventually Jeremy calls back. We've done nothing. I, ca I called Tiffany. Yes. And this is after 10 minutes. Oh, those... you went you went over the top. Yeah, because yeah. I you... was texting Jason and he wasn't responding. I was like, I, I could tell this guy was in, in need of help. You called the boss. <laughs> Yeah, you went over management. I said, tell, "Tell me, tell me, real. Do I need to get in my car and come?" And she goes, "You need to get in your car and come." So he does. He's <laughs> flying down the freeway, uh, officers. He was not going ninety-three miles an hour. This was an emergency. He was though, and he's almost to us. This is thirty minutes later. And and, look, and look, okay, let's color in the other part of the the story. So at this point. Our group chat. We have a group Slack for our company. <laughs> All of a sudden. This story just starts being talked about in in our company Slack, and I, like I'm it's a it's a Sunday night. I couldn't believe it was live, and I'm just I'm in the bathroom, you know, like I'm on my phone. It's like, oh, it's oh, this is funny. Wait a minute, this is happening this is a now? real this is a real actual live story that is breaking right now. Yeah, and, and so we're getting. The details we're hearing from uh, from from all sorts of different sources, and everyone start everyone from the company starts chiming in about this can't be real. This cannot be a real thing that is happening, and Jason is just terrified. It was. I'm telling you guys, it was the size of my palm. It was the full palm. It was the biggest, nastiest, gnarliest spider I've seen now, outside of a tarantula in my life. So, but. So for context, if if the spider is the size of your palm, I'm telling, uh, and you legs put, go, okay. But I'm saying if you were to slap the spider with your palm, that would mean that the spider would die. Is that correct? Or the shoe? That would mean I would die. <laughs> but so, anyways, um, to wrap this up here, yeah. Uh, uh, so, so okay. So Al was almost way. There. My family's there. sitting at a restaurant yep. by themselves. He has no a <laughs> he's abandoned this family. And he's about eight minutes away. I'm on the phone with How him. How did your wife feel about this? What did she have to say when you she, said? She knows Jason. She goes, you got to go. Yeah. Okay. She, she oh, knew I, wow. I was in need. Um, and so. Cheers to that. While, I'm, while he's almost there, a truck pulls up <laughs> behind our two cars. 
Big and, and you hadn't truck. called anybody else. Oh, no, I hadn't called anybody. And because there's two cars there, everybody assumes someone's already stopped for help. Uh -huh. But no, now the Good Samaritan shows up. And as soon as they show up, my initial thought was, oh, no. <laughs> now I have to tell somebody. I have to tell somebody the, the reason we're stuck on the side of the road. This guy comes up. He's like, did you get a flat tire? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's a spider. <laughs> <laughs> and and this this man uh was a man and he got out of his large truck and he went over there and he grabbed this spider with his hand and took it out of the car and I proceeded to give him all the money I had on me and said thank you and then Jeremy just had to drive back 40 minutes to his family you did nothing Jeremy no oh, hero for you I was so angry with that man <laughs> that was my You're kill <laughs> I had dibs uh, Unbelievable. And I'm alive, and I'm here to And tell it's story. all in one weekend. Also, uh, PSA, because maybe it's been a while since I've said this. Uh, should you uh, follow me on social media, and you're like, oh, look at this funny spider picture or story or whatever. Yo, get blocked. Um, yeah. Are I, you going to start bringing uh, bug spray in your car? <laughs> true story. We talked about, like, how do we avoid this in the future, and I – tell me if this is a good idea or a bad idea. Oh, no. I thought to myself – when we park up at the cabin, can I get bug spray and spray it around the car? Like make a like a like a That's salt not gonna help. circle. That will not help you. No, no. So I got to spray the inside of the car. You do, or close the windows. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't just open for the taking. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. So, anyways, I survived. Uh, I, that was quite the introduction. <laughs> I mean, it was just unbelievable because you couldn't have written a script like anybody else. That story is insane. Okay, I gotta Except go back. Except for you, hate spiders. I got, I gotta go back. Man pulls up to your because you, you, you kind of just sped this conversation up. He says, "Do you have a flat tire?" Yeah. How did you exactly? And you, and, and you say, yeah. "Well, no. There's actually there's a really big spider, and we have a problem with spiders." And the man says to that comment, "What?" I, I I believe we set him up by first of all I said there's a spider it's really big and I'm an arachnophobic so we just can't do anything about it okay. and then and then I think my wife asked him are you afraid of spiders to which he then said spider no I'm not afraid of spiders and so I was like <laughs> heck yeah you're up <laughs> um you're up <laughs> you're up and and he just I mean this shout out to John Stone John Stone that's right I got his name did you ask what he's actually afraid of nothing this man is afraid <laughs> of he's not afraid of death um he grabbed, <laughs> and to be clear he grabbed it with his bare hand yes he just went in and, and knocked it out with his bare hand with his man hand oh my, my hands are so they're too soft spiders <laughs> will eat right through these hands <laughs> too soft. they're too moisturized oh i lotioned on the red <laughs> all right let's let's uh start the show now all right with some would you rather Hey, Spitwads, if you are listening, maybe you're watching this right now, and you probably wonder, I mean, I know a lot of people wonder, how do I look this good all the time? I have wondered that every day of my life. Yes, uh, and if you were here, you'd be wondering why I smell this good all the time. I've Jason, wondered that I mean, every day of my life. <laughs> you've wondered, sitting so close to me? Mm, you smell so good. The answer, of course, is Hawthorne. <laughs> their grooming products, they're my answer. When I want to look good, feel good, smell good. And uh, look, it's it's sophisticated. Uh, you guys, we've all been through the uh, yeah the uh, questionnaire. I'm a grown up. They use data from hundreds of thousands of customers to recommend perfect products for your body chemistry and skin type and hair type and lifestyle. Uh, so lean on Hawthorne to upgrade everything: your body wash, shampoo, deodorant, game. Make sure you're ready for anything or anyone that comes your way by taking Hawthorne's quiz today. Go to Hawthorne.co. And use the promo code SPITBALLERS to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O. Promo code SPITBALLERS. Hawthorne dot C-O. Promo code SPITBALLERS. Would you rather... Riggles from Patreon says, would you rather be stung by a bee daily, oh, no. sprayed by a skunk weekly, or quilled by a porcupine monthly? Ooh. 
Oh my god! I have. I, I've never done any of these three. Have you? Oh, had, I was gonna say, me and you are the two people on Earth that have never been stung by a bee. Yeah, make the, it three. Really? You have, You've not, never, I have been stung? never been stung by a bee. My it's son, one of my proudest. My son was stung at your house a little while back. He was stung the other day in the yard. He's been stung like four times. Now, the way that Jason feels about spiders. That's how you feel about bees? Most of my life, I like I have I've really like tried to look inside myself and uh not be a little baby boy in front of bees in front of my children so that they don't mm -hmm. so you don't pass it on. So that yeah, which so it, Jason is completely <laughs> passed on. Oh yeah, my So my whole yeah, I, I don't keep the cycle going. I've I have gotten better. I do not like them. But I, I have, I've, I've made some strides when it comes to bees. I've moved to a place where I'm, I'm good with them, because I feel like so if, you could, like you can just do a oh there's a, here's a bee. I'm hand chill swat. around them because okay. I feel like if you're chill around bees, I've seen these beekeepers. Oh, it's mm -hmm. true. The beekeepers yes. just they walk up to a hive. I've got a friend who moved uh, to the Midwest, became a beekeeper. He's always posting Instagram videos. He never puts protective gear on. He goes in and takes these hives out of places. That's crazy. And is just, this name John Stone? <laughs> I, is, yeah, no, like this is the, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm serious. You have a friend. Yeah. They moved. Did they move with intentions of None being at all. Okay, so they they get to said location. Yes. And, okay. They found they, a new passion. Did they move for work? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. So they moved for a different job. Yeah. And somewhere along the way, they said, you know what we need to do? Be beekeepers. Yes. That is fascinating. And he sells honey and all that stuff. So it's fascinating. Yeah. So he started his what own a, business. Where do you get the bees? Well, no, the bees <laughs> bees come you, to you. you. You just get flowers and you're good to People go, man. People call you all the time because they have bees that get stuck in their house or their trees. And you they get the bees. It's like free bees. Except you probably get paid for it. You do get paid for it. You wow. get paid to get your workers? Yes. <laughs> what? You get paid to get free bees. I've never been. Have you been stung, Al? I have, yes. Yeah. Were you allergic? No. How does it hurt a lot? A scale of one to ten. Four. And does it last? Three. Does I'll it go last? Three. Okay, three. Uh yeah. it it lasts for a few minutes. My son had a big welt for the whole like next two days. Oh, that's yeah, that's like an allergy. So I'm curious like the one that's I'm convinced I would die. Yeah, oh, for sure you would. It's the full my girl situation. Yeah, I'm not I'm not afraid. It's so funny because like bees actually hurt people right, most commonly. spiders don't bees, hurt people at all right bees are flying weapons and the, you cannot figure out where they are going to go because they don't know where yeah, they're they going to go see that the comforting thing is when a bee stings you it commits suicide right so to me it's like it's making a real last that laugh. didn't stop the planes in world war ii man no i goodness <laughs> gracious <laughs> they knew what they were doing somebody check that man's cup over there um <laughs> Good, good. How do I pull back from that? Well, I had a um, question regarding this question, which is why I would assume that the worst one here is the skunk. No. Uh, you got to take you, it's you not can't painful. Just wipe, it just smells. Oh, but you can't you gotta just take the wipe tomato it bath. off. Uh, what? A tomato bath? You never heard that? I think that's true. Yeah, that's when you, not a thing. That is one hundred percent a thing. If you get sprayed by a skunk, you're supposed to. You have to fill a tub with uh, tomato it's sauce. Something about the acids or something. Yeah. that's so much tomato sauce. I know it's a very expensive thing. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to have a whole tomato farm. Oh, it's a myth. Oh no, that's not a myth. That's real. Oh, a bunch of people did it for no reason. That's real. Do you know how much they spent on tomato sauce? It's big tomato juice that did this. Big Genius, <laughs> those big tomato people. They hey. got us again. Big tomato was like living in. A, they were born in an era where skunks were running wild, and, no and they're one, like, <laughs> no one actually likes tomato juice. All you have to do is take a regular bath, and you're fine. Well, no, because but they're like, no, make it tomato I'm sauce. I'm pretty sure that a regular. <laughs> A regular bath doesn't like actually remove the smell, but I'll bet you you take a tomato <laughs> bath and you, you smell don't like smell the skunk anymore. You only could smell. Oh, uh, is that tomato? Don't uh, take this the wrong way, but uh, you take a bath of tomato. So this sauce. this begs the question: work or pain? Because if you get skunked, you've got a long period of time to clean off once a week. If you get stung by a bee, it's probably just a little bit of pain. Now, the quill is out. I'm not getting quilled by a porcupine. That's, that's only once, once a, a month. month. Yeah, but, but that is a whole... That's work and pain that was to my get question, the quills out. Is how does a 
Do do porcupine quills have? Any, oh, Barb any, City. Well, but I'm, do they have any venom or anything? No. Uh, I, I think it's just a point. They have, but they got barbs that are stuck that, in yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not downplaying that. That would really, really suck. But if it's only once a month, and you got to pluck it out. P Grab porcupine the... quills can be very painful and introduce serious infection if not dealt with quickly and effectively. Grab the quill firmly near the tip and pull straight out quickly and steadily. This will minimize the risk of br of breaking off the tip. Okay. Yeah, so there's once, a, that means no. there is a risk of that mm, barb staying okay. in me. And okay. then you get infected. No, you get porcupine's the... out. Porcupine is out. I'm going to do I'm going to do the bee sting. I'm going to pretend like this is What is that daily though? Yeah. yeah. Son of a gun. Yeah. <laughs> That's every single morning you get out of bed and you step on a bee. Well, I was thinking like, you know, I grew up, I got allergy shots once a week. Okay. You got, you deal with a little bit of pain. It puts a needle in you once a week, but daily I'm taking I, this gunk. I'm going, I'm going with the daily pain. I'm going to go with the quick ouch and get over it. I, I probably I could, hit I could my get toe. a shot every day. I get, you know, yeah. I stub my toe every day. So this is just twice. You stub your toe every day? Well, I'm, maybe not every day, but I get hurt on, you know, probably more often than I should. You should. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Final answer, Mike. I, I think I'm taking the quills. I'll risk it. Oh, you psychopath. I'll risk it. How in the world would you take quills? How many? Well, define you know how, how many, many quills. Just one. Just one. No, quill. it ain't no one quill. No, it's quills. Oh, it's a oh, porcupine. They don't quills. just shoot one at you like a sniper porcupine. So it, is it random? It's got to be fifty quills. No, oh, it's not. Get out of here. No one ever gets fifty quills. That, 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 that would be the suicide of the porcupine. <laughs> the porcupine's gone now. The porcupine launches its entire pelt at you. Yeah. He's it's just. Not. He's literally stuck to you. <laughs> he's asking, "Can you please?" Remove me. If it wouldn't be too much trouble, sir. It would not be abnormal at all to get 50 quills in you from a What? Porcupine. Porcupines have, guess, get this, 30,000 quills on them. What? Yeah. Oh, my. You, you got to change your opinion, Mike? 50? 50. I've, I've, seen, I've seen the video of the lion trying to eat the porcupine and getting quilled. That's a cartoon. No, this was, a, this was <laughs> real. <laughs> this was real life. And your it was final not, answer. It you're was, getting 50 quills, brother. It was not 50. 30,000. If yeah. you keep this like under 10. Oh, these pictures I'm seeing. No, no, no. All right, I, okay, then I guess I'm taking the B. All right. Eli from Patreon says, would you rather get 126 US dollars daily or the ability to see eight minutes into the future with the caveat that knowledge obtained in the future cannot be used for financial gain? So it's just a party trick. Did you what? just make up this $126? Eli I guess did. Eli did, huh? Eli's coming. What can you use eight minutes into the future without the financial gain part? I don't. Does that make you invincible? Uh, yeah, a little bit, right? Like if any you, harm yeah. that could a fight. Come, Imagine a fight. Well, a fight, yeah, but I just mean even like a car wreck, right? You'd be able to avoid a car wreck. Um, yes, you would. Yeah, eight minutes for sure. Now no. you wouldn't be able to avoid some forms of harm. Sure. Yeah, that being said. Yeah, like total disasters. You know, or, might, or germs. You couldn't yeah. see germs eight minutes into the future. We might, uh, you know, we might be going a little too far here, but I believe that if you were to see eight minutes into the future, you are seeing whatever happens regardless of what you do. You're not changing it. You're seeing what happened. And then the reason the car accident happened is because you tried to avoid it. You made the U-turn okay. and the... Wow! Yeah, does it reset every second? I think, I think you're... But I, I need Al to de defend it. When he said you can't use it for financial gain, I assumed you could use it for other things. There has to be some gain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just seeing But, but what stuff. gain? <laughs> All I can think of is money. All right. Let's, I'm very greedy. We just got this superpower, right? Okay. We can see eight minutes into the future. Um, what if I Some use... people unsubscribe from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what if I help my friends get money? No. Oh my God! No financial <laughs> gain. No, no financial gain. I can't see a good use of this because every time you think of it, you're like, "Oh, I know what happens in the sports game," and then I'll bet it. I mean, really, what you're doing is you're saying, "I I know what's going to happen in the sports game," and watch how smart I am. You're going to tell your oh, friends, it's a pride thing. I'll bet they do this play." You know, you. I mean, I'd be a great TV broadcaster. Tony Romo gets credit for like calling a couple plays. I'd be a genius. Got a question here? I'm sure you do. Your ability to see the future, okay, is this like you're watching a screen? 
Like you're you're watching in your mind's eye. You're watching a yeah. Essentially, you're watching a screen from but but it's your perspective. Sure. So that so that you see things moving on at eight minutes. Do you feel, or well, do you, I, I or know. is it just you, or it's almost like you sitting on a couch watching this, and then at any time you can sit down and watch eight minutes. Yes, yeah, I think that's all it is. You're just you're just you see it happen. If you want to look into the future, you just see it like you're watching Netflix. Would this help you? Uh, so you're from real- overeating because you know how you'd feel <laughs> eight minutes from now. If but you're like, oh, that looks good. That looks really good. so. But but you're like, your real life would pause. Yeah. And you're just watching. You would instantly know, just in the blink of an eye, you could see what's going to happen in eight minutes. I guess, Mike, you're probably taking the financial gain that's built into the hundred. I mean, hundred twenty six dollars a day is not <laughs> bad. That's thirty grand. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take thirty grand for free. Okay. I'll know. take, the, I just, I'll take I just, the money. I'm short sighted. It, it feels I, like a parlor trick if you can't get money from seeing in the future. Yeah, right. but then again, <laughs> if you're telling me someone came up to me and said, "Hey, it's going to cost you thirty thousand dollars." Oh, yeah, for this power. And I will let you, anytime you want to see into the future eight minutes, you'll be able to. I don't know how I don't. 30000 a year. Ooh, okay. Yeah, same. But what if they broke it down and they said, for only $126 <laughs> a day? Yeah, give me the money. All right. <laughs> it's it, it's funny because eight minutes into the future is not that much. No, it, you're not gaining some incredible insight. A day into the future, humanity. maybe. But, you're, I mean, you are absolutely right of like those snap like quick disasters that happen, you would be able to avoid all of them. 100%. As long as you... That's not terrible. As long as you didn't have to... Like, if you always were aware of eight minutes into the future. Or if you just saw... You, you saw, you're like, oh, no. That's what Jason was saying. <laughs> oh, if you, no. If you can't change it, you know eight minutes before. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the whole thing with the sun? Don't they say, like, the light yep. you see from the sun yep. is what? Like, certain amount of six, minutes? Six minutes or something? It takes that much time to yep. get here at the speed of light. So I, of course, once I heard that, I grew up thinking the sun could have exploded and you wouldn't find out. For another six minutes. Eight and a half minutes old. Oh, it's eight and a half. Okay. That's wrong. Does, that, does that mean if the sun exploded, though, that would actually be true? You're asking the wrong guy. I don't know. Yeah, the answer Nothing is, can go yeah. faster than the speed of light, right? Yeah, the answer is yes. So that means even the effects of an exploding sun, if you blew it up now, yes. you're not feeling those effects any faster than the, the speed of our light. Our light would not turn off for eight minutes. But then would that then be the we same? Would, be melted. would that be the same moment we would get like the aftershock of the sun? Yeah, either like if the, it was a super either, bomb. Yeah, either the, the the sun engulfs the planet, or we freeze because you would you would freeze almost instantly. Hmm. It would it would be just like being in space. Interesting. All right, uh, should we move on, or do we have time for another? Would you rather there? Uh, let's do one more. Poop soup. <laughs> <laughs> Poop soup from the website. Well. Oh. Uh, you know what? I can't really judge any listener of this show for a poop related name. Would you rather have to always try to nonchalantly finish other people's sentences when they are halfway through them or or nonchalantly? (laughs) I see what you did there. Nice. Or nonchalantly mimic their actions while they are talking to you, their hand movements, facial facial expressions, posture, et cetera. These are both terrible. Oh man. My wife does the repeating you thing. But she'll do it so far beyond what is acceptable. You know, it's like once you're you're really upset and you're like, okay, stop. Okay, stop. And then you just keep going forever until I am broken. She breaks me. And then I laugh and I find it funny. And then that's once you start laughing, it's yes. it's done. Um these are these are these are terrible options. Yeah. I I think I will take the nonchalantly trying to finish other people's sentences. It feels like more of a game, right? Like you're trying to. It feels yeah. like it feels like uh you know something yeah. fun like that some you could be a part of. Some sort of engaging challenge, challenge for you for to. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that an improv thing? Uh, yeah, there are some improv games Things that are like that. that are kind of like. <laughs> Finishing someone's sentences is one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> yeah, I would say that I'm afraid of spiders. Right, exactly. Because when I oh come on, <laughs> I I'm, let, I, I'm not I, trying to finish. I'm trying to talk. I've been trying to train myself not to cut you off. I can't yeah. get back into that habit. Um, um I, I <laughs> oh, that is so oh, bad. No. Be, being repeated is so, so much bad. worse. <laughs> Oh, that feels <laughs> of all the sh- of all the shows and people we've done thousands, we've done thousands together. together. Yeah, okay, let's move on. All right, we're much. just moving moving forward. Oh. 
spent wads, cryptocurrency. It might feel like some secret or exclusive club, but Coinbase secrets. secrets. But Coinbase believes that everyone, everywhere, should be able to get in the door. Whether you've been trading for years, like us, like us, we've. Yeah, I mean, it's worked out. We have had Coinbase accounts and and traded cryptocurrency forever. Coinbase is the easiest place to do it or you're just getting started you want to get into it coinbase is where you do it uh, they offer trusted and easy to use platform to buy sell and spend cryptocurrency they support the most popular digital currencies on the market they make them accessible to everyone they offer portfolio management and protection learning resources and a mobile app so you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place it is obviously been just about the best investment over the last decade out there so whether you're looking to diversify or getting started or searching for a better way to access crypto markets start today with coinbase for a limited time new users can get ten dollars in free bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash ballers sign up at coinbase.com slash ballers for ten dollars in free bitcoin this offer is for a limited time only so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash ballers. That's a great question. Drew from the website, what's the difference between a hotel, a motel, and an inn? I love it when we do these questions because I learn something every time. Yes. Yeah. A hotel, a motel, and an inn. Well, they're in the wrong order because a lot of times people want to, you, you know, you, you talk about uh, a puddle and then a pond and then a... a well, you go small to big? Right. Small to big or big to small, but here... You're saying an inn is smaller than a motel? I'm yes. saying a motel is worse than a hotel. Of course. But I think that, to me, the difference between a hotel and a motel has always been it's all inside. If you are, If you go to the lobby... And they say, uh, Mr. Wright, your room is this way. And I stay inside. Oh, my gosh. I'm at a hotel. You're if, at a hotel then. You're, at, I, a, you're at a motel. If, if you have I to walk leave the lobby the and go outside and I go and I, and I have to walk outside and then I go into my room, I'm at a motel. Uh, so I think, I think you're partially right. But the actual, the actual differentiator, which I think you're interpreting as going outside, is are, do you – do you feel unsafe? <laughs> it's just, are you terrified? Um, that's a motel. So if you go to a hotel, that's fun. If you go to a motel, you don't want to be there, and you shouldn't be, and there's 50-50 chance you're mugged or robbed. And the inn, the inn is just something they call a motel to make you think that you don't need to be afraid. I, yeah, an inn is like quaint and small, yeah, right? Yeah, like on purpose, though. Well, but but you feel safe at an inn, don't you? Because it's, it's usually someone's house. What is it? Bed and breakfast an inn? Yes, that's how oh, I view no, it. No, You don't think a bed and breakfast is an inn? No, I think a first of is all is it a motel? A, a motel is something you have to be able to see it from the the, the local highway. <laughs> you okay, have to be able to sure. physically see the light from the highway. That's for sure. But Hotels the light, can be located anywhere. It's the light. You don't actually see the building because it's not tall enough. Correct. They're always really flat, U shaped. You park right in front of your door. That's the way a motel is. And an inn is... I don't is, know what an inn is. And, well, an inn is really tiny. I think a bed and breakfast does... What we know is that there's never yeah, any room. what about Holiday Inn? There's never any room. Is Holiday Inn a motel or an inn? I think it's a hotel. I think it's a hotel. It's a hotel? Yeah, Holiday Inn is not an inn. They are... They are... They are... Might as well call them Denver. They're such liars. <laughs> um, th they are what just What about a hotel. Holiday Inn Express? Now that's a motel. Yeah, for oh. sure. I do not feel now, safe. Do they call it an inn because motels you're out? Mm. Oh. And they wanted to counter effect that? I've always heard there's no there, there's never room. There's in never the inn. room at the inn. That's what well, I they're so when, small. Whenever you want in the inn, right. you're out. There was no room. No that's, room in the inn. That's the story I've always heard. Yeah. <laughs> but there's plenty of room at the was, hotel. They just oh, gone so to the hotel. The <laughs> and the motel always, always has room because no one's there. It is, it, you know what I mean? It's vacant. There might be a worker. And, and a motel always has the sign out front where it's, it's oh, the two yeah. different lights. There's no and vacancy. Mm -hmm. yep. And then they light up the no when they want to pretend that it's all full, mm -hmm. but it's really not. And a motel will never give you ice in the room. You have to go get it. And that's your best chance of getting mugged. Wait, who's on the way to get the ice? They bring you ice at your hotels? Oh, yeah. We well, stay they're nice indoors. Hotels. Well, you have to go get it, though. That's true. You do go get it, but you don't gotta. You don't have to go outside. You don't have to get mugged to get it. Right. Well, no, because you're in a hallway. Right. You're not right. outside. You can't. 
Yeah, you only or- muggings only happen outside. <laughs> that's actually something else you should learn. Um, if you're indoors, it's illegal to mug somebody inside. That's right, or if, outside. If, well, either one is illegal. But if you, you look like a good mark that had a lot of money, but I respect the rules of the roof. Yeah, if <laughs> if if you're mugged indoors, you you just got in a fight. That's all it is. You didn't. Oh, get is that the difference? Yeah, you can't go to the police and say I was mugged because they go, well, where were you? And you'd be like, well, I was in the hallway in my. Like, you didn't get mugged. You got in a fight, bro. <laughs> that's that's what that's just true. And we don't know what the inn is, though. The inn is where there's no there's, room. There's Al, no what's, room. What's it? What's an inn? You can't stay. The, oh, nobody stays at an no, inn. Nobody that has was, ever stayed at an inn. It's just always the small. innkeeper. That's yes. right. It, it's, just, it's just a house. It's just a money laundering business. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, Soares from Patreon. Ouch. So- Soares. <laughs> Ouch. Um, Thank you for I, your support. I have a reusable water bottle. Oh, brag much? Jeez. <laughs> that I refill and carry around daily. The only thing that goes in it is water. How often do I need to clean it? This is a great question. This is a great question. This is a great question. question. And I know How the- dirty is your mouth? Because <laughs> every time you put water in it, you're cleaning it. Right. No, but every time you drink from it, you're backwashing. But then I put new water in it, and I've just cleaned it. Right. But you're drinking the water you're cleaning it with. But you're never going to clean it while it's half full. You're not going to like. Oh, that's dirty. Right. You you would never like put some soap in a half full and then drink because then you'd be drinking soap. So it is always 100% of the time clean. False. I'm confused. How now, is it? Wait, what? You actually, you do clean. You should clean the outside though. Um, I think that this the reusable outside? The outside. You could have put it down on the ground. It's got Who dirty. Who cares about the outside? It's what the only the part, part where you- your tongue goes. The, yes. The, I, don't, I don't just like take my water bottle and I'm like, lick, lick. No, I'm just saying because- The mouthpiece is the biggest concern here. But it's always cleaned by the water. <laughs> when you drink- Not the outside part of the mouthpiece. That's not clean by your mouth. Hmm. That's the part you got to worry about is the outside of the mouthpiece. Everything but, inside but is real questionable. But ta- real talk, like- if you have the one where it's got the the uh, the flippy straw yeah. and it comes up and it's the plastic, oh, yeah. you got to bite it. Eventually, if you look at that straw, Not at the good. at the bottom of it, it is a a black mass is starting to grow. You never look at the straws, never. So then it stays clean. Yes, because as long as you don't look if at you it, you don't f- know you are fine. If you look at straws that you have used like reusable straws right oh never gives do that. the bacteria power it is a bad bad idea you're gonna see how nasty it is now um, judge giamatti said just a smell test i mean that's not a bad idea yeah but i think that it most just smells things, like water most things that are like think about a, a glass you would use at home you it would never smell bad like i drank water out of a glass and then the smell test yeah it's, it's always gonna smell in a, fine in a no, pond it's, it's not true a water bottle it has a smell that forms after enough a pond uses. doesn't always smell but you know there's tapeworm in there a pond by other <gasps> can i get tapeworm from a po- i have yes, wanted to know where i can get tapeworm for so <laughs> oh, long no! because <laughs> man the dream is alive you can eat anything you want this is your weight loss plan you're going to eat one on purpose oh baby i can eat i can go no. to mcdonald's all the time and i'm just feeding my worm <laughs> excuse me eating for two <laughs> Yeah, could, uh, could I park in the expectant mother's spots? Could I say, like, oh, there is a plus one in here. You don't believe me? Watch me eat. Um, no, a tapeworm diet plan has always Somebody's been my fallback option. going to give him a gummy option. worm, and he's going to eat like crazy after he... Oh, gosh. A tapeworm has <laughs> always been your fallback? My fallback diet plan. I assume someday I'll have to find one, but I didn't know I could find them at my local pond. Yeah, oh yeah. Just drink the pond water, There's, brother. Look, I mean, it might come with some other different viruses Smell or Smell the pond <laughs> first. Probably yeah. help with weight loss, too, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I mean, water weight. Eventually, um, you weigh nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, by the way, like, is water more... Is it more dangerous to leave a cup of water out that is full... Ooh. Or a cup of water out that is empty, but with just like a little water at the bottom. Because I always think that that one's more dangerous. Oh, that feel it does feel. Why dirtier. does it feel worse? No, wait with with like just a little bit of water in yeah. it. Yeah, that's not worse because that's backwash. No, right. but the like little bit means that like you're saying stuff's because density, grow on it. Yeah, whatever grows is not diluted by like, the. Like you don't entire grow cup. mold in the middle of the water. You only grow it. On the areas where, like... Mold doesn't grow on water. I know, but it will eventually grow on... Bac- bacteria grows where it's moist. Sure. 
I mean, literally walls filled with moist water grow molds. Yeah, but that's growing and on the mosquitoes. Water. They grow mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> moist areas. All right. All right. Uh, I think we did it. We figured it out. Alec from Patreon, how many pieces of paper do you think you could punch through at the same time? <gasps> what oh. an awesome question. Now I'm really that curious. Is. So these are secured on the edges, so you can 100% just keep trying to punch. Yeah. Have you Not guys, a lot. Not a lot. Have you heard the... Uh, it's not 500. The explanation, and I'm going to need... Ow, I need someone to back me up on this because it's, it's insane. But there's like... Something about you, if you fold a paper a certain amount of times, it becomes the thickness of like the universe. Didn't we do that in a liar liar? Yeah. Was that something we did? Yeah. I, I don't, Probably a lot. We've, we've talked about so much crap, man. I don't know. Yeah. But I'll, that's, I'll a, look that's it up, a thing. Uh, it right? is a thing. Yeah. yeah okay. I've, I've heard that. Um, so can you punch through the universe? No, not yet. I'm working on it. Um, I couldn't. So I, I'm going to start with what I know, which is a ream of paper, 500 pages. I could not punch through a ream of paper. Okay. Okay. If that could you tear a, uh, a phone book? A phone book in hand? No. You've With like some massive shears, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I could okay. not tear a phone book in half. Um, although there's tricks to that, right? Like you spread the pages and you're not actually tearing. I don't it all know. I've, I've seen strong men do it. I think I could punch through a hundred pieces of paper. Okay. How thick is a hundred pieces? of no paper? No way. It's a fifth of a no ream. No way. You don't think so? <laughs> no way. Yeah, I could definitely punch through a hundred. No, you couldn't. How? Th I don't think you can punch through. Yeah, how low is that number? Yeah, what do you th what do you think? Could he get through twenty? Twenty is about where I think you could get through. You don't think I could get through fifty sheets of paper? No, no. Wait, you don't either? No, I've, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> <I know>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> fifty sheets of paper, no problem. No, yes, I put problem. A, I put a hundred dollars down. I could punch through fifty sheets. Fifty sheets. Of paper. sheets? I'll don't take think it. So. I'll take the bet. Oh, oh wait, which side? Not your side. Oh no! Here's the thing. Oh no! Is, Is there anything that we have that could hold the paper securely enough to let him try to punch through it? I can make something. I want. Here's what I want. I want him to hold the paper up. What in front of his face? Right in front of his face, and I'll show you. I could rip through that paper. I don't know if you could do twenty. Oh man! What about two? <laughs> you think I could do two sheets of paper? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Thank you. Not if there was a picture of a spider on them. <laughs> oh man, that might that might be how I get through, uh, because uh -huh. because we know uh -huh. that you're about to hit a spider. Yes. I just can't. I just want to know this spider. I've heard the story three times now. The spider's gotten bigger every time. It's like one of those fisherman oh, stories. Hold on. I want to know how big this spider really was. He's over here talking big game like, if you put a spider on it, that's when I could really punch through the paper. Meanwhile, he's in a situation to save his family on the side From of the road. a big rig rolling over on him. <laughs> one of these things a is, a, is, a, is a photograph that, yeah, I probably, long, couldn't, the, I probably couldn't punch no, no, no. that paper. Hold on a second. It. Let's put you back in that situation. Please don't. You're on the side of the road with your family. John Stone doesn't roll up. Mm -hmm. It's 40 degrees out. A bat phone over there doesn't answer. Yeah. You got no cell coverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had how you, long had does you this go? Is that a thing where once you recognize the gravity, you would do it? No, of course not. We actually had one alternative plan. You were going to leave what? the van. You were going to all get no. in the other car. No. You can't leave the van because then you don't know where the spider is. You're 100% right. You would have. We would not have left the van. Okay. We would have said that it broke down and got it towed. Oh. We would have had the van towed somewhere. Okay, but then you... You would have paid... But then how long does... You realize that if it gets towed... Right. The spider could still just be in there somewhere. Right. 45 days later, we will um, clear the van out How quickly. long can a spider live in a car? Oh, I, you'd I, sell the van. And we would sell the van. That spider was going to cost you all the tow money. Yep. All the all the cost of trading it in. Mm -hmm. I want I, now that spider I'm, almost ruined your life. Now I'm picturing Jason at home, and he orders a uh, a bug guy for a full fumigation, and they show up <laughs> with like the tent for the house. Uh -huh. Like, okay, is this the place? Nope, that right <laughs> and you there. Just point to your car. Put the tent up. <laughs> take it down. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. No, I, I, I did Sir, have that thought. This is gonna cost three thousand dollars. Just make it happen. It's, it's worth it. Do you see the size of this spider? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I. Wow. We, I have been googling for used cars. That's not even like I. We have. We're looking at trading. Are this you? Van. You so know are you that sure? logically the spider's gone. 
It we, hasn't done anything to you. John Stone could be his could be Denver as well, and he could, could be, be a lying. liar. He said just he, took your he money? knocked it out, and he's like, "Oh wait, it's down there." And then he hit, it, and then we. So did you kill it? Well, I didn't kill it, but I uh, knocked it out. And we're like, "Are you sure you saw it knocked out?" And he's like, "I guarantee it." And it felt a little too confident, you know. It's like, why are you needing us to be this sure that it was out? It's funny that neither of you watched him get rid of the spider. We tried. Oh man, we need to draft. The Spitballers draft. All right, we are drafting the best dad clothing items. As in, like this the is most the dad. most dad. The yeah. most. These are staples, right? Like yes. you're building, you're building some dad wardrobe here. Only a dad's wearing that, and only a dad is wearing it. Mm -hmm. And so, Mike, you have the very first pick. It's unfortunate to be first in this draft. Is it, man? It is. There's kind of a one on one. I've there. got a one on one. Oh, as well. I have like eight one on ones over All here, right. fellas. All right. Uh, but we're gonna kick. Oh man. We should also say, considering we are kind of middle-aged dads, mm -hmm. we should say which of these we find acceptable, okay, or that we've we've acquiesced to mm -hmm. as we come along to them. I'm sure Al, all of them are in your wardrobe. So, ah, uh, man, got. I'm trying to uh, trying to analyze the draft here. What could possibly make it back that I just have to have for my most dad? Everybody can close their eyes and see a dad. Oh yeah, and you know exactly what we're talking about. So we'll just. We'll go right. We'll, we'll go right to the source. It starts on the. It starts on the feet. It starts on the ground. It's those white New Balance shoes, my friend. <sighs> That's I, the clear. I one don't. On one. I don't understand what happens to dads when they're just like, foot fashion. Don't care. Give me some white New Balance shoes. I, I have a little insight to that. I know what it is. Okay. Because my father bought the same pair of, of white New, real close to white New okay. Balance. They were gray New Balance. <laughs> Uh, for for about twenty some years, the same pair, uh -huh. and that's what it is. It's they found the pair that feels good, and I, I think it's really a testament to New Balance. The New Balance, perhaps it is. It's like the, the dads put them on. They're like, oh baby, I can walk in these, and then they never want to change the pair that fits. My dad, my dad was a Reebok dad. Okay, white. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. Why, oh yeah. Why are the why are dad shoes always white? Why are they always? I don't. They, they just like they like that clean white look. And oh, they, the white New Balance. And 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 the white shoes always look bigger. Oh, and well, the, so the New look, Balance ones are are chunky. You're just wearing gigantic marshmallows on your feet. Yep. I had my one on one on the list was white New Balance Velcro. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Wow. All right. Well, that's that's a good pick. That's that's a shame. I'm gonna go. Um, hmm. There's, oh, there's man, a number I've of got, directions. I've got so many good ones. I'm going to go with pleated khakis. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, must have the pleats. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, the pleated pants. Oh, for sure. Just What's the, the definition worst. of a pleat? Oh, the pleat is when you're when you're wearing the uh, like a khaki like or the, a, the, a dress pants. The it's fold when, line? It's when you have those cinches, those oh, fold lines across yes. the front. Yes. Oh, that, yeah. That There was a time. I get it. I, this is... This is Ladies and gentlemen, we are fathers. We're not just taking shots at dads right now. There was a time when that was in. That was fine. That was socially acceptable. It was preferred mm -hmm. that we needed to have the pleats in our pants. That oh, time, was fancy. That time was gone like 25 years it ago. It was a though. That's short the window. It was a very short window. of. But then they stuck around. But it was only a short window when it was actually cool. And then, uh, have yeah. Have you ever seen these time capsule dads, though? Like I, I, so we go to these sporting events with my son, you know, flag football games. There's tons of dads everywhere. And every once in a while you find the time capsule dad. They're not wearing the dad stuff. Yeah. They're the ones wearing what they wore in high school. Same high school spiked haircuts, same big wide jeans, same oversized t-shirts. Yep. They just never stop doing the routine from high school. And look, I get it. Uh, like if you were like, hey, Mike, what uh, what new music are you listening to? Well, I got some stuff from the late 90s <laughs> that I think you might like. The older you get, the more you want to just do something you're, easy. You're locked in, man. You're locked in. All right, my pick, I have yep, two of them. You get two. You sure do. Well, good. I, I actually thought the 101 was this pick that I'm going to make. Um, it's also on the feet. But I'm going with the socks and sandals. Oh, yep, yeah. shoes and socks. The so or, uh, socks and, socks and sandals, and sandals yes, yes, yes. look is... I don't know at what point. Now that is full. 
I don't care. Yes. Yeah. That's yes, full it like is. Like I'm not taking the socks off to put the sandals on and I'm not making a sandal choice based on aesthetics because I'm wearing socks. So uh, the socks and sandals are going to be my first pick. That's tremendous. <sighs> now, I have an item. Are these all forward facing? Forward Do facing. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't. You know what? Never mind. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna go to the cell phone holster. Oh no! Yeah. That's oh the yeah. One I thought would come back. Oh, I'm the going, phone clip for I'm sure. I'm going to the cell phone holster phone clip. My father is a phone clipper. And he it's still the worst. does it. Oh, it's terrible. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. My dads are on blast today. <laughs> oh yeah. Why don't you look down right now and see if you've got a phone clip to your pleated khakis, and you could know that this is a problem. This is about you. That we're here to help with. We're here to yes. We're here. Yes, to, we you know, are. On one hand, you have some of the top picks in a draft from Spitball. Right. Congratulations. You're very dad. Yes. I um, thought that would easily make it back. Yeah. I'm going socks and sandals, cell phone holster. So, since we are putting dads on blast mercilessly. <laughs> Of which we are, but not quite this stage Not yet. quite this stage. I feel the need to put myself on blast. Oh, is this one you go with? I don't think there's much more dad clothing than a, than a polo shirt. You yes, wear a polo. You and I am a polo <laughs> man. My wardrobe in my closet, I've got like the t-shirts and I got the polo section. I've got a lot of polos. I love them. They are my you favorite shirt. You wear a lot of polos. D-A-D guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, it's a dad shirt for oh, sure. Oh, man. I love it. <laughs> love, I love me it. a good golf polo. Oh, oh man. Oh, it's so comfy. Spectacular. <laughs> It's like, All right. it's like I'm dressed up, but I'm still comfortable. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Oh. Oh, gosh. Mike, you're up. You have okay. a couple of picks. There's three that I just. Oh, you man. only I, get two. I love them. All right. Well, we, I mean, we got to start with this one. Uh, there, look, there may be some people in this office that are guilty of this crime <laughs> as well. I'm not going to name any names. Cargo shorts, my friend. Oh, if yeah. You, if you got the extra pockets on yes. the bottom, what are you doing? Why do you need those? Maybe I used to. I had so many cargo shorts a long time ago <laughs> that my pocket for the wallet was always the right cargo pocket. I was too. When but I, this was back in the cargo days. Yeah, when I was a young lad. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, there's so much room for all my stuff. <laughs> it, it is convenient. <laughs> like, would you rather go hiking in a normal pair of shorts or cargo shorts? You got to go with the cargo shorts, yeah. man. But the, yeah, they're very, very dad short. They're a little yeah. dated now. That's that was the next on my list. Oh, for excellent, sure. excellent. And then uh, I will follow it up. My third pick. Oh man, which one makes it back? I don't know. We'll go with. Uh, <laughs> look, when you get older, I get, I get it because the the eyesight goes. I mean, uh, Jason wears fantastic glasses. Oh, thank you. you great glasses. I was a glasses man for a long oh, time. I know where you're going. And, and I, I had to bought get these ones. <laughs> and look. When you have prescription lenses and you go outside, oh, yeah. there's a problem. You can't wear Dang this, it! You can't wear this sunglasses. This is my pick! But what if your lens did both? What if you could be inside and then you go outside oh. and you're wearing sunglasses? And I will take transition lenses. There is nothing <laughs> worse than transition lenses. <laughs> nothing. And for That's a slow transition <laughs> right there. Especially when you come back inside. My dad had these. For, you had them. My dad I, had them. I bought some. I went glass. You just indoors with sunglasses for a long time. <laughs> yes. That's that's the biggest problem is they're when you don't need them. sunglasses. Even when they're done. Even when they're fully untransitioned to regular <laughs> lenses. Like, those are a little tinted. Those, <laughs> those look real stupid. And the thing is, is I bought them. And they were expensive. That was like a huge upgrade. It cost a lot of money to add the Well, there's transition. a lot of science going on there. And uh, I did this, of course, without my wife because she never would have let me do this. <laughs> I just thought, oh, that's cool. I can always have them. I mean, it was it was a real dad maneuver because it, I think part of the problem with dad- <laughs> You are so is right. The, the, pro the problem with, with uh, all this dad clothing and, and, and just dad gear is practicality and ease- over fashion so yes. it's like oh i don't need my other you know look at all the room in these pockets oh i can <laughs> just slip the sandals right on over the socks like it's, it's all just ease it's when you i already found myself a wife when you don't consult the significant other so that you have a sounding board for this mistake you're about to make that's when you end up with the dad and once you got it you're like yeah well 
I've got it now, <laughs> so I'm going to wear it. All right. Now I'm just going with the regular old dad. And I, this is just what you're going to wear almost every day. Oh. It's just a nice pair of Costco jeans. Yeah. <laughs> just, just some... <laughs> Just a real nice, I mean, they're very boxy. Uh, they were very affordable. And uh, I can wear them every day. Just a nice yes, pair of Costco can. jeans. Oh, man. You get a lot of good use out of those. Oh, yeah. Like, those are very uniform Are those blue. Wranglers? No, Costco's. Yeah. Three for 30. They got a great deal going right now. Yeah, that's, yeah. And when you got dad jeans, you got to let everyone know about the deal. <laughs> oh, you have to. That's how you qualify. Yeah. Like, oh, no, these jeans, oh, they were a great deal. <laughs> I'm telling you, I saved so much money. You can <laughs> go get them at, right now. They're on sale. <laughs> Ten for a dollar. Aisle A5. Oh, Don't my gosh. Them. All right. I'm back up. Yep. Yep. Two picks, my final two. Well, I've got to start this off with some headwear. Uh, look, if, if I know dads, I know out here in Arizona especially – you are very, very comfortable in a large sun hat. You <laughs> are, it's on my list. You are just fine. Again, if you you don't want the sun to get to you, and you don't care what you look like preventing it. So you're going to wear a large sun hat with a big old – it might be wide-brimmed. Oh. It might be just the back neck. Uh-huh. But this is going to be a normal part of your wardrobe. Guilty as charged. Yeah, you've got one. Well, I know You know that. I do. Oh, yeah, you go out. The sun is so strong. The sun is so strong. And even though you look so stupid – it's again. It's just very practical. Yes, and I I don't know if it, hopefully this one's still okay to be picked. My final pick, it's a variant of one of the already made selections. Well, that's that's fine. That's but fine. frankly, in Arizona, the Costco jeans aren't going to cut it when you can get yourself some jean shorts. Yo, George, oh, yeah, George is on my list. But not cool. They're not cool. These ones have a very even flat bottom. They're, these ones aren't cut short. <laughs> these are very hemmed. They're these, hemmed. Are, these are manufactured. <laughs> they this might way. be jean cargos. We don't know for <laughs> sure. But they are jean. They are they might be whitewashed. I mean, they are short yes. jean shorts. Shorts absolutely on this so, list. So there's my socks Fabulous. and sandals, cell phone holster, <laughs> sun hat. Jean shorts, oh, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. There's there are people listening to this show right now. They look that look down that are like what have I done? <laughs> oh, man. You're a dad. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats. You're probably a wonderful father. Now go burn all that you stuff. You look like a weirdo. Other, other than the sun hat. You might want to keep that. It's oh, very, yeah. very useful. Very I practical. Did, I did want to piggyback your transition lenses and go the clip-on lenses. Those, right. those are the nice backup yeah. if you need them, the clip-ons. but Those can go in and out of, of fashion. Of fashion, yeah. yeah. Transition right. lenses cannot. <laughs> Un unfortunately, Mike got my cargo shorts, and sometimes you might be without your cargo shorts. Mm -hmm. And there's only one solution. Oh, no. It's that's a so, fanny pack. It's not even on my list. Yeah. That's so good. Oh, man. I mean, uh, again, super practical. I could tell you. If I go to Disneyland, you go I, fanny. I go fanny. Yeah, Dude, I got all like, my cash right full, in front. full fanny. Oh yeah, full like fanny. Front, back. Full fanny. I mean, I'll put it to the side. I'm a hip young dad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, it's so it's European. So, yeah, so easy to keep everything all in one place. Oh man. Well, that's a great closer pick right there. Hit that so, one out of the yeah, I got pleated khakis, a polo shirt, Costco jeans, and a fanny pack. Oh, that's so good. Wow. That one's outstanding. I hadn't even thought of. Did you have a fanny pack phase as as a? I did. Was a wee lad? I did. I was. It was like third. I definitely held it to the side too. It wasn't straight in front of you. Oh no, nerds like, do like that. Third to fifth grade. I think I had a fanny pack on every day. Small detour because I'm thinking about the Let's fanny go. pack being, you know, tilted to the side, right? Which really, the fanny pack's most convenient if it's right in front of you. Right in front. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that you do as a kid, for goodness sakes, kids. I think they stopped doing it. But I felt a tremendous peer pressure to only use one side of the backpack strap. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And I needed both, man. My oh. backpack was heavy. I needed the security. And I probably misaligned my spine yes. for years. I have permanent damage. Because I had to do, I can't do both. I'm a nerd. No, two straps? Yeah, that's yeah. you're right. I got to look cool and hold this all with one side. That's for dorks. All cool right. kids wear with one strap. Isn't that so ridiculous? Please, yes. So stupid. It is Humans so are... stupid. But, man, if you see both straps on there, <laughs> that as a dork. Wow. <laughs> All right, Mike, your final pick. All right. We'll close this one out. When dad and when when dad goes on vacation, you know he cuts loose. 
And there's oh, only one type. Oh, yes. There's only one type of shirt yes. for dad when he's on vacation. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that is the Hawaiian shirt. Oh, yeah. that is so good. It's probably not buttoned. <laughs> oh, it's of course not buttoned. It's it. He's got a white T-shirt under there. Hey, Al, do you got any Hawaiian shirts over there? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah when, when I'm on a cruise ship, I am bright. You're wearing the and a few days after. Yeah. You're, you're, fan, you're wearing the open Hawaiian shirt. You got your cargos on. You got your socks and sandals, your fanny The wind pack. is blowing through that shirt a little bit. The transition lenses have, have fully gone to sunglasses. Oh, baby. <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> I, other, other nominees yeah. here as we close this out. I did have bolo ties out there. D- are they That's grand- but they're more That's grandpa. grandpa. They're more grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got tube socks. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had the, the high socks, but it was just like yep. socks and sandals took care of it. Novelty had, t-shirts. Yep. That's what I've got. Uh overstuffed wallet oh Ooh. very dad like, very dad whitey tidies <laughs> certainly they don't always show those off and then it was but they do sometimes well you know, it was a combo with the wallet but it's like dads just have huge key rings that have like 30 <laughs> 30 keys on there okay. and you, and you right. only use two of them but you hear him jangling coming down the stairs and of course gildan t-shirts <laughs> oh of course well what do you think all those novelty t-shirts are printed on Cheap as possible. Ten for a dollar. <laughs> All right. What did we learn today? I learned that Denver is full of lies. They are Ooh. full of crap. I mean, Flagstaff looks down upon you, Denver. Literally. Yes. <laughs> Literally. Uh, I learned that Jason's spider phobia goes so far that he can't even save his family <laughs> to kill a spider. I I have ri- I wrote two words down. Spiders win. Yeah. Spiders I mean, win. It's, that's shameful. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, no. I was full of shame. I still am. Um, but know thyself. And uh, we love you, anyways. My family lives. That's a nice polo you got. Thank you, John Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everyone. See you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.